Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Orthodox Hands with Boy and Hands. Uh, today's question comes from uh, Julia J. Atop. Her question is whether I was born Orthodox or whether I'm a convert. Uh, you know, ever so often there is this debate among Orthodox people online on Twitter. Uh, there's this conflict between uh, convert Orthodox and cradle Orthodox. And each of these sides has their strengths and weaknesses, both of which are sometimes just justified, some of them are not. And I'll be honest, I consider myself honestly both. And some may say that's a double thing or anything, but it's not really. Uh, because uh, I was raised in a non-religious household. And when I say non-religious household, I meant that we observed some like traditions for uh, Christmas and uh, Easter uh, or Pascha, like we would dye eggs on uh, uh, Lazarus Saturday. We would um, uh, we would go to uh, you know to churchyard and wear these little bells, which is a big thing among uh, Serbian Orthodox kids and so on. However, there was never any serious talk about religion in my house whatsoever. Uh, my dad is simply an atheist. My granny uh, was, uh, you know, sort of this traditional woman, but again, she did not like the church. Um, my mom is sort of similar. Uh, you know, she would, uh, she she would, and she does respect the customs, as we would say in our home. But that was about it. And however, for some reason and I can only explain this as a miracle and I'm not the only case I'm aware of uh, is that I was interested in religion from the youngest age. Uh, I've probably mentioned this in some video or, or other but um, in Bosnia I had a granny aunt and um, opposite to her house was a mosque and it was a very beautiful mosque with a blue roof uh, completely white except for the dark blue roof, similar to these icons that I have here. And uh, I would constantly, whenever I went to her, I would uh, pastor her. Uh, granny, granny, take me to the church. So she would find this woman who had the keys to the mosque. And uh, they would uh, get inside, uh, they would take their shoes off. Um, and my granny aunt told me to take my shoes off, but that Muslim woman, she was like, no, 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 he's a kid, let him <laughs> go around in his shoes. And I would uh, instantly climb that, uh, uh, what do you call it, that pulpit uh, that uh, imams use for their sermons. And my granny, Brian, get down from there. And that other woman was like, no, no, his kid, <laughs> let him climb the pulpit. Uh, sadly, that, uh, that mosque was bombarded by, I presume, Serbian forces during the recent wars in the 90s. And I feel very sad for it because I do associate it with the beginnings of my own spirituality. Uh, as I grew, uh, I became more and more interested in religion and uh, the biggest uh, step forward was actually a Bible for kids that my mom bought for me when I was very little and she intended to read these stories for me. Again, she wasn't religious, but you know, oh, Bible stories, why not? You know, she, she, she's that kind of person. However, she never got around to actually reading it. I mean, no surprises there. But thank God I was a voracious re reader when I was little and I found the book and I read it, read it. And even when uh, I read it about when I was eight or nine. However, uh, I do distinctly remember crying about uh, when I was reading about the crucifixion of Christ. But still, I knew that Christ would arise from the dead. You know, I still had that knowledge about that mystery of faith. Uh, the next, uh, so um, at that time I would sometimes go to church to light a candle, even if though, if, even if it wasn't a, this big feast day. But I was still wouldn't know anything, and uh, I uh, the the biggest move uh, from to a practicing Christian was actually when I was gifted this catechism by Saint Nikolai Velimirovic. Uh, the Faith of Saints, and it's still one of my favorite books ever that I like to read from time to time, that answers in a, a very easy Q&A format 
uh, what Christians actually believe. It's still one of my favorite books and I eventually hope to have an illustrated version of it uh, on, my, um, on my main channel. Uh, that, that book, you know, actually taught me about uh, what Christianity teaches more, much more specifically. Also, there is one little moment before that, and that is that my grandfather, who was a very higher-ranking communist in the Communist Party of Yugoslavia, and he was a consul in a number of countries, including the U.S. and uh, Turkey, uh, for some reason or another, he would always have this small church calendar in his house. I, had, I have no clue why he had it. It was always, you know, a new one. Uh, and uh, now this calendar would list, you know, different saints and feast days. But on the, the final pages of every Serbian Orthodox calendar, you have these, my two favorite pages, that simply list uh, seven deadly sins, seven heavenly virtues, the seven holy mysteries of the church, uh, ten commandments, seven church commandments, uh, and I think that, and even though this is like a little booklet and you can read these things in, I don't know, 30 seconds, uh, I really like that, you know. So, never underestimate the power of lists. So, I uh, read the catechesis and uh, uh, around that time or a couple of years later uh, we went to Corfu. I venerated the relics on St. Spiridon and that is where... I decided to actually attend my first Divine Liturgy at the age of 17, I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, I do consider myself uh, a convert because... Uh, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the, that moment when I actually forget to turn, on the, uh, turn off the sound. Um, I do consider myself a convert because nobody around me practiced any religion and I did have to face some hurdles in respect to my parents. Uh, I would uh, have to, you know, uh, fasting was a big issue in my household. It led to many arguments, especially because only my grandmother would hear about, did hear about some of the fasting seasons like uh, the Dormition fast, uh, the Apostles fast, and even then it was really difficult to cook in two pots. It was, it, it was so incredibly difficult, especially because uh, I didn't know how to cook, my granny didn't know how to cook tasty, uh, you know, fasting foods, and I really couldn't act like I liked it. I mean, I, <laughs> maybe I, I'm better now, especially because, you know, over time my taste changed, and now I can and do eat much simpler foods, but at that time it was, it was so incredibly difficult. Um, my parents would have this, uh, well, mother, <laughs> he had uh, a lot of these fears that I would become a monk, that I would leave the family, that I would go astray, and so on. And, uh, you know, later on I joked, why, uh, why aren't you taking drugs like all other normal kids, and so on. However, I do consider my myself a cradle as well, because I'm born in a culture where Orthodox Christianity is every day. You know, nobody would suspect, you know, uh, to people in Serbia, Orthodox priests don't look like these wizards uh, with these big cauldrons or fonts and so on. So it wasn't as difficult as, and you know, I don't have to explain icons to my parents. I had to explain why I have so many icons and that is why I tend to warn converts that, you know, to tone down the shopping sprees because it can lead to a lot of completely unnecessary scandal because you know, you're, generally, you're not going to pray to all of, the, all of those saints on a pretty regular basis. So, you know, get, get an icon or two. Don't have an entire iconosis. Um, that's basically... I do consider myself both, and, uh, and yet I do not consider myself fully either of these two things. Uh, I can have the best of both worlds, I have the worst of both worlds, and I have some experiences that I won't, ex that I won't experience from neither of these worlds. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, I do wonder why. Bye! <laughs>